Did you know that the clitoris is literally exactly like the penis in men? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're going to be talking about five things I bet you didn't know about female genitalia. If you're new here, I make urologic and sexual health content each and every week, so make sure if you like what you see, you subscribe and share this channel with your friends. So the first thing I bet you didn't know is that the clitoris is like the penis. In fact, they are homologs, which means embryologically, the clitoris and the penis were the exact same thing in the fetus. And as they differentiate into a female and a male fetus, they then develop a clitoris or a penis. And they both have the exact same structures. Essentially, they have corpora cavernosa, which fill and expand with blood when aroused, and they extend in size. In fact, for a long time, people thought that the clitoris had about 8,000 nerve fibers. A recent study published out of the Oregon Health Sciences University looking at clitoral tissue under microscopes found that it has an average of 10,000 neurons in the clitoris, meaning that it's highly sensitive and probably the only organ that's ever been identified that's made purely for pleasure purposes. That brings us to number two. The clitoris has a foreskin. This is called the clitoral hood or prepuce, and it's actually there to protect the clitoris from infection or irritation. It's very similar to the foreskin of the penis. In fact, sometimes that prepuce or clitoral hood can develop inflammation from oil buildup up or dead skin cells and cause pain, discomfort, or even adhesions between the clitoris itself and the hood. This is kind of similar to what we call smegma in men, which can be uncomfortable and make erections and pleasure sometimes difficult. In women, this can sometimes have no symptoms at all, or other times it can be painful around the clitoris or when someone touches the clitoris, or it can make it more difficult to achieve orgasm. In patients who have these problems, there is an in-office-based procedure called clitoral adhesiolysis that can be done to free the glands of the clitoris from the hood itself. And while this is not a highly studied area, in a study of 41 women, the responses after this procedure were actually quite good. 76% reported improvement in pain, 63% reported improvement in sexual arousal. Overall, the large majority were really satisfied with sex after the procedure and with their decision to have the procedure. Number three, the labia minora or the inner lip of the vagina can vary person to person. The labia minora are kind of like a fingerprint. They come in all different shapes, colors, sizes, thicknesses, and they're unique to you, just like your fingerprint. Not everyone looks alike. In fact, many of the images you see on pornography are digitally mastered to make them look a certain way. Many women can have labia minora that protrude outside the outer lips, or it can even be asymmetrical. So they have one that's longer, or they have more on one side than the other. Interestingly, during arousal, the labia minora can grow up to two to three times larger than usual, and they can also change color. They usually change from a pinkish color to an intense red color right before orgasm. And good news is all these changes are just temporary. After sex, these things go completely back to normal. Number four, the vagina increases in width and length when preparing for sex. The walls of the vagina send signals to the brain telling it, hey, we're ready. And a couple things happen. Your body starts producing lubrication in the vagina and also the vagina increases in width and length. In the non-aroused state, the vagina is about three to four centimeters wide and eight to nine centimeters in length. However, this can increase in up to twice its size to be ready to to accommodate a erect penis. And after sex, it all goes back to normal. So there's no such thing as getting a loose vagina from having sex. Your body is extremely adaptable and malleable. And lastly, the vagina is self-cleaning and has its own bacteria. The vaginal environment is very protective. In fact, because of the estrogen in the vagina, the vagina typically creates an acidic environment. It also has very special bacteria that help protect the vagina microbiome. This helps prevent infection and prevent any bad bacteria from entering the vagina. If you're suffering from recurrent yeast infections or bacterial infections or even recurrent urinary tract infections, it's typically a sign that there's something abnormal in the microbiome. In fact, a very easy treatment for prevention of recurrent UTIs is using vaginal estrogen, particularly in women who no longer make enough estrogen, like those who are postmenopausal, have had surgery, or are on medications that reduce their 
estrogen. It's really important not to clean inside the vagina. Your vagina does it itself. So things like douching are really not recommended. And if you want to clean down there, you want to take soapy water and let it run down the outside and only clean the hair bearing areas. The vagina will take care of itself. It doesn't need to smell like flowers or roses or vanilla or candy or anything like that. It has its own smell and it is perfect just the way it is. All right, guys, I hope you all found this very helpful. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it. 